For decades, scientists have stared at the veins of millions of people, haunted by a question they couldn't answer. Hidden in that blood was a pattern, consistent yet inexplicable, stretching across continents and thousands of years. In 2025, after centuries of frustration, new evidence emerged, revealing a story that was both extraordinary and deeply sobering. The breakthrough didn't just explain a genetic mystery, it exposed the quiet tragedies of isolation, survival, and loss that shaped human history. The name at the center of this story is simple yet profound. Type O blood. Type O blood, an ancient clue in our veins. Long before the world was mapped by explorers and colonizers, a silent marker of humanity flowed unnoticed through millions of veins. It was not gold, territory, or language, but something far more intimate, blood. Among indigenous peoples of the Americas, one type dominates almost entirely, type O. In some communities, its prevalence reaches 100%, a biological concentration almost unheard of elsewhere in the natural world. Scientists have long been intrigued and perplexed by this extreme uniformity, not just because of its rarity, but because of what it represents. Endurance in the face of isolation and adversity. Unlike other blood types that shift and mutate over generations, type O persists with stubborn constancy. It is in many ways the outsider, quietly surviving while the rest of humanity's genetic story twists and turns around it. Blood is classified by the antigens on red blood cells. Type A carries A antigens, B has B antigens, AB has both, and O has none. That absence, seemingly insignificant, grants type O a unique power. It can be transfused into almost any patient without triggering an immune reaction, earning the title of universal donor. But its significance extends beyond medicine. Evolutionary biologists believe type O may have offered resistance to certain diseases and perhaps even protection from infections that once decimated populations. These advantages, subtle yet crucial, may explain why it survived while other blood types faded in isolated populations. When researchers charted blood types across the globe, they noticed a striking pattern. Indigenous communities across North, Central, and South America overwhelmingly exhibit type O blood. In some tribes, the rate is over 90%, while the global average hovers around 62%. The origins of this dominance remained speculative for decades, but one theory gained traction. Tens of thousands of years ago, small groups of humans crossed from Siberia into North America via a land bridge known as Beringia. If these early migrants carried predominantly type O blood, and if isolation kept them genetically insulated for generations, the dominance of type O becomes less a mystery and more a consequence of circumstance. Isolation magnified its presence. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples in the Americas were cut off from new genetic influx. No fresh blood types entered these populations. The type O gene pool remained pure, concentrated, and resilient. As centuries passed, natural selection further reinforced this dominance. Diseases, environmental pressures, and the harsh realities of survival shaped populations in ways that quietly favored type O. By the time European explorers arrived, this blood type had already carved an indelible mark across the continents, a silent witness to endurance, adaptation, and loss, survival and blood, environmental pressures, and the Ice Age. Long before cities, farms, or even permanent settlements existed, early humans faced a world that demanded every ounce of resilience. For those first migrants into the Americas, survival was a daily struggle against an indifferent, often hostile environment. They crossed icy expanses, navigated frozen rivers, and trekked through vast stretches of tundra. It was in these unforgiving conditions that type O blood began to reveal its subtle yet profound advantage. Researchers suggest that people with this blood type may have been slightly better at delivering oxygen in high-altitude or low-oxygen environments. While the difference was minor, 
In a world where every breath could mean the difference between life and death, it mattered. As the last ice age gripped the planet, small groups of humans were effectively trapped in isolated pockets, cut off from the larger currents of migration. In these pockets, survival was dictated not just by skill or tool use, but also by biology. Type O blood, resistant to change and carrying inherent evolutionary advantages, became more than a marker. It became a lifeline. Those without it, or with less optimal combinations of antigens, may have succumbed more readily to diseases, malnutrition, or the cold. Over generations, the selective pressure was relentless, quietly steering entire populations toward a single dominant blood type. The movement of these ancient peoples across North, Central, and South America was not just a migration of bodies but of genes. Each river crossed, each mountain climbed, each winter endured, shaped the genetic makeup of future generations. Isolation preserved the type O gene, allowing it to propagate without dilution. This created a feedback loop. Survival favored type O. Survival allowed reproduction. Reproduction strengthened the gene pool. What may have begun as a small advantage in a handful of pioneers became, over thousands of years, a defining characteristic of entire continents. Comparison with other regions reveals the peculiarity of this dominance. In Africa, the birthplace of humanity, Type O is also widespread, yet other blood types coexisted in more balanced proportions. In Europe and Asia, Type A and B began to rise, influenced by diet, climate, and disease exposure. But in the Americas, the genetic deck was stacked differently. Isolation, harsh environmental conditions, and the pressures of survival converged to favor Type O in ways that were both extraordinary and tragic. Entire communities carried this legacy unknowingly, their veins carrying a story of struggle, endurance, and quiet loss that would only be understood millennia later. By the time modern science began mapping blood types in the 20th century, this dominance had become unmistakable. Studies in the 1980s across Native American communities in Arizona found 99% prevalence of type O, a number mirrored across distant regions from Canada to South America. What was once a survival advantage had become a haunting symbol of isolation, survival against odds, and the silent tragedies etched into human history. It was a story waiting for 2025 to finally make sense. Evidence in the Data How Scientists Traced the Bloodlines By the late 20th century, Researchers had amassed scattered evidence suggesting that type O blood was extraordinarily common among indigenous populations of the Americas, but the reasons remained elusive. In the 1980s, a groundbreaking study in Arizona focused on Native American communities revealed an astonishing statistic. 99% of participants carried type O blood. This was not a local anomaly. Follow-up studies across North, Central, and South America confirmed similarly high percentages. Scientists began to realize that the dominance of this blood type was not a coincidence. It was a product of isolation, environmental pressures, and centuries of survival challenges. Yet the precise mechanisms and the ancient story behind it remained just out of reach, a silent mystery waiting to be decoded. Advances in genetic analysis in the early 21st century allowed researchers to trace bloodlines and migration patterns with unprecedented accuracy. Using DNA from contemporary populations alongside ancient remains, scientists could reconstruct the paths of early humans as they crossed from Siberia into the Americas via the Bering Land Bridge. Every gene, every blood type, became a marker of historical journeys of hardships endured, and of generations lost to disease, starvation, and the unforgiving climate. Type O blood was revealed as more than a genetic trait. It was a survival signature. Its absence in other regions of the world underscored the tragedies that accompanied the migration. Not all who crossed survived, 
and those who did carried with them the blood that would come to dominate an entire hemisphere. This research also highlighted the subtle, often tragic role of disease in shaping human genetics. Indigenous populations, isolated for thousands of years, were repeatedly exposed to environmental pressures that could have devastated those without the adaptive advantages of type O blood. Lacking the A and B antigens may have reduced vulnerability to certain pathogens, giving type O carriers a higher chance of survival. Yet even with this advantage, countless lives were lost to famine, harsh winters, and epidemics. The survival of the gene was inextricably tied to human suffering. Modern genetic tracing in 2025 brought everything into sharper focus. By comparing ancient DNA sequences with modern populations, scientists could finally link type O dominance to specific migration events and isolation patterns. They discovered that early groups were small, often numbering only a few dozen families, and that each death or birth carried an enormous genetic consequence. The isolation acted as a genetic bottleneck. Those who survived passed on their blood type almost exclusively, while others disappeared from the record entirely. The dominance of type O blood, once puzzling, now became a sobering chronicle of loss, resilience, and the unyielding pressures of survival in a harsh, unforgiving world. Health and Survival – The Advantages and Tragic Costs of Type O Blood While Type O blood offered certain evolutionary advantages, it came at a subtle, often tragic cost. Its very survival as the dominant blood type across the Americas was inseparable from the harsh realities faced by early humans. For thousands of years, the environment was unforgiving. Disease, famine, and extreme weather were constant threats. Individuals with type O blood may have had a slightly higher resistance to certain pathogens, but that did not spare entire communities from loss. The persistence of this blood type was not a story of comfort or ease. It was a quiet testament to human suffering, survival, and the relentless hand of natural selection. Medical researchers in the 21st century have looked back and seen patterns that explain why type O thrived. In regions with fluctuating oxygen levels, such as the Andes or other mountainous areas, type O carriers may have been slightly more efficient at oxygen transport. That efficiency, though marginal, could determine life or death over time. But for every life saved by this genetic edge, countless others were lost to conditions that the blood type could not mitigate. Harsh winters, malnutrition, and diseases carried silently among small, isolated populations. Survival was selective, brutal, and unyielding, and the dominance of type O blood reflects a history of both resilience and repeated tragedy. Isolation amplified these pressures. For millennia, early American populations were cut off from outside genetic influences. No new blood types were introduced, and the communities relied entirely on their own genes to survive. Natural selection worked silently, yet ruthlessly. Those with traits less suited to the environment faced higher mortality. Type O, with its lack of antigens, may have lowered susceptibility to infections that killed others more easily, giving carriers a slim but critical advantage. Over generations, this edge became magnified, allowing the blood type to dominate while the stories of those who perished faded into genetic history. Even in modern times, the echoes of this history remain. Indigenous populations with high percentages of type O blood still confront challenges in accessing health care. Although their blood type is vital in emergencies, supplies are often limited in remote areas, creating a paradox. The very blood that ensured their ancestors' survival is now under pressure due to human systems, logistics, and inequality. It is a reminder that genetic survival alone cannot shield a population from suffering, whether in ancient times or today. Modern Implications medicine, supply, and the ongoing legacy. Today, type O blood carries a significance that goes far beyond its evolutionary origins. In hospitals and emergency rooms worldwide, it is often the difference between life and death. 
Its universal compatibility, especially O negative, makes it indispensable in surgeries, trauma cases, and disaster responses. Yet even in the modern age, where technology and medicine have advanced immeasurably, the availability of this blood is not guaranteed. Indigenous communities, where type O prevalence is highest, often face barriers to accessing medical care, creating a cruel irony. The very blood that sustained their ancestors for millennia is sometimes scarce when it is most urgently needed. The logistical challenges are immense. Blood banks must maintain a delicate balance, keeping enough typo in reserve for emergencies while simultaneously meeting everyday medical demands. Shortages are common, and the consequences are stark. Patients who might survive with a transfusion can face fatal outcomes simply because the supply cannot keep pace. In remote regions of the Americas, where typo dominance reflects thousands of years of isolation and survival, the scarcity of donations underlines a tragic disconnect. The survival gene that once offered a subtle advantage against disease now intersects with systemic inequality and resource limitations. Modern genetic research has revealed yet another layer of poignancy. Studies tracing the ancestry of type O carriers underscore just how fragile these populations were. Small founding groups faced environmental pressures and epidemics that could wipe out entire family lines. The prevalence of type O today is a living marker of those who endured, but it is also a reminder of the countless lives lost along the way. Each vial of O blood in a hospital is, in a sense, a testament to generations of survival against relentless odds and to the genetic bottlenecks that shaped entire continents. Beyond medicine, this blood type continues to provide insights into human history, migration, and adaptation. Modern DNA studies in 2025 have confirmed what anthropologists had long suspected. Type O blood is a genetic thread connecting past and present, revealing pathways of human movement, isolation, and adaptation across the Americas. Yet the story is not one of triumph alone. It is intertwined with suffering, as the advantages that allowed type O to persist were forged in environments of scarcity, disease, and hardship. Its dominance carries the echoes of struggle, reminding us that survival is often inseparable from tragedy. In this sense, type O blood is more than a universal donor or a research subject. It is a silent witness to the fragility and resilience of human life. It represents both the biological triumph of a gene and the human cost that accompanied its rise, a legacy written not just in laboratories, but in the lives of those who lived, suffered, and endured for thousands of years to ensure its survival. Now that we finally understand the origins of type O blood, what do you think surprised you the most about this ancient mystery? Do you carry this genetic legacy yourself? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories that uncover the hidden truths in our history.